People say that there are more fake Rolexes in the world than real ones, which is kind of mind-blowing, but it's also kind of scary. So today, I'm gonna to show you six ways to help you identify the real ones and keep you safe, like some sort of public service announcement, or maybe like a, a horological superhero. <laughs> Welcome back to Barking Jack, I am Adrian, and I've been into watches for a while, uh, kind of seriously into watches for about eight years or so, uh, and in that time, I've managed to buy and sell a handful of Rolexes, and it's scary. It's scary because there's a lot of scams out there, and because there's a lot of fakes out there. Both scams and fakes, they're, they're major topics to talk about, but today I'm just gonna be focusing on fake watches. If you're interested in scams, then hit subscribe down there because I will be dropping another video on that stuff later on. But today, I'm gonna show you six ways to help you identify a fake watch. If you're watching this video, then you're probably looking for a way of saving yourself a bit of money on your next watch purchase. And luckily, this video is sponsored by Chronex. They've given me a discount code to share with you and it's gonna save you money. Now, before I take you through these six points, I wanna highlight how how tricky this stuff is and kind of how good or how deceiving mid-tier fake watches are. So I'm going to show you some footage and some photographs and I want you to see if you can figure out which one is fake and which one is real. How did you get up? Did you get them all right? No, I, I doubt you got them all right because it is tricky. And it's tricky for two main reasons. One, because fake watches are getting really very good. And this isn't even a good fake watch. This is a mid-tier fake watch. This costs $600 and you can get fake watches costing over $1,000, which is just stupid because you can get brilliant watches for that kind of money. The benefit of me showing you a mid-tier watch is that this is the most common kind of fake that you would come across. The second reason why it's so difficult to identify between a fake and a real Rolex is that Rolex aren't actually that great at their finishes. There are misaligned parts, there are badly finished areas both on the case and on tiny details like the hands. So let's get into the six points and these six points are pretty much all around little details that Rolex have added to their watches to make it hard for them to be counterfeited. And these details are where the fake Rolexes really stand out. Now, the first one's an easy one. It's a serial number. Every single Rolex has a unique serial number. And before 2010, you could actually use a serial number to date the watch. But after 2010, they used a, a random collection of numbers and you can no longer date the watch by that. So if you have the serial number of the watch, just type it into Google, put quotation marks on either side because that's you commanding Google to search just for that exact item. And if it comes up with lots of results, then it is fake. Fun fact, between 1987 and 1990, Rolex actually used the name Rolex as part of their serial number sequence. Of course, missing out the O because O is similar to zero and that would have just been confusing. The next point is a Cyclops or the date window. This is there to magnify the tiny date disc behind so that it's more legible. A real Submariner magnifies that tiny date number by 2.5 times. The Cyclops is a really hard thing for these fake factories to get right, not just because of magnification, but also the clarity of the number behind. A real Rolex won't have a massively skewed distorted number. It'll be relatively clear. Also, Rolex uses anti-reflective material under the Cyclops to make it easier to read. But this anti-reflective Reflective material is clear. This is obviously harder for people to find, and so fake watches often have a little tint in the Cyclops. This one is blue, and the blue is a massive giveaway. Now with the next point, we're gonna to start to get a bit geeky because it requires quite a bit of uh, attention to detail and quite a bit of time to kind of dissect this part. And it's the laser etched crown down at six o'clock. Real Rolexes have a tiny laser etched crown on the sapphire crystal down at six o'clock. It is incredibly hard to see with the naked eye, but you can just about make it out if you angle the watch in a certain way. Uh, it's easier to see if you've got a loop or a macro lens on a camera. Rolex don't just laser etch the crown logo at six o'clock. They do it with tiny dots at different heights, different depths within the sapphire crystal and so it's not just one continuous line creating the logo. This is one of the biggest places where fake watches are identified as being fake because it's such a hard process to be 
replicated. A lot of fake watches over accentuate the crown down at six o'clock to make it stand out. On the real watches, it's very, very difficult to see. Just get out a loop and, or a macro lens or something that allows you to magnify it and see if it has these dots in different depths. Another little fun fact, if the logo has an S inside of it, it just means that the glass has been swapped uh, during a service, but it's legit. It's just stating that this is a service part as opposed to the original part that came with the watch. Now we're gonna look at the rehort. Uh, this is kind of like the inner ring that connects the dial to the glass or the bezel. And it has Rolex, 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 Rolex <laughs> written all the way around and it's engraved or it's now laser etched. At 12 o'clock, we have the Rolex logo, the crown, and then at six o'clock, we have the serial number. This is a tricky area to look at because the process has changed over the years, but there are two major things to look at. One, how the text is executed. Rolex laser engraves this stuff. It is exact, it's so precise, and it is super, super clean. Everything is super sharp and it's without doubt perfectly executed. Another thing to look out for is on the right hand side of the dial, so one o'clock down to five o'clock, the X of Rolex is going to line up with the hour markers. On the left hand side of the dial, so seven o'clock up to eleven o'clock, the R of Rolex is going to line up with the hour markers. Now the next part is finishing, which is a weird one because at the start I said Rolex isn't really known for its high finishing, but there are areas of the watch which will be absolutely perfect. And that's usually around text and markers. The fake one that we have here, the, the text has been executed absolutely horribly. It's really quite sharp. The size and shape of the numerals is incorrect. But the main thing for me is how poorly this has been executed. The font on the dial is a tricky area because over time, again, Rolex changes the fonts, the shape, the spacing, that changes over time. But again, the big thing to look out for is how has it been executed? Font on or printing of the dial on a real Rolex will be perfect. The printing on this watch on my fake Rolex is decent. It, to the naked eye, it looks absolutely fine. When you get up close, that's when it starts to fall apart. The last point about finishing is, again, text and spacing. That number on the date disc must be printed absolutely perfectly and the placement of it must be in the middle of the date window. As, as you can see on this fake one, it's just terrible. <laughs> it looks crap. The next point is the movement. And this is probably the easiest way to identify a fake watch, but it's also hard because you need the watch in your hand. A real Rolex, the movement will feel absolutely buttery smooth when you interact with it through the crown. When you unwind the crown on a real Rolex, uh, there should be a little bit of resistance because essentially you're unlocking the crown, but as you unscrew it, that should feel super smooth. When you interact with the movement, either winding the watch or changing the time, all of those cogs moving together should just feel like you're sliding a hot knife through butter. On a fake watch, it's a completely different story. Even unwinding the crown, unlocking the crown, it feels horrible. It feels the finishing of the thread is just terrible. And then when you wind it and interact with it, the movement is just not as exact. It's, it doesn't feel as highly engineered as what a real Rolex does. If at any point it feels like there's sand in the movement or, or as if you're pushing a knife through soggy sand, then it's, that's not a good sign. It's game over. Now there are expensive fake watches that have actually cloned a real Rolex movement or at least attempted to. There's technology in a Rolex movement which is just incredibly hard to copy and it's just not commercially viable for a fake counterfeiting company to copy the watch. There's a reason why Rolex watches cost so much, of course, as part of the branding, but they are highly engineered things and they're difficult to manufacture, which is why good copies cost a lot of money, which I just find completely ironic. Even with the highest grade of cloned Rolex watch, any half decent watchmaker could spot a fake movement from a mile away. This one that I have in the back of this watch is just, I don't think anyone would be fooled by this. It looks absolutely shocking. The finish on the parts, it just looks bad. So there are my six main points around identifying a fake watch. Again, the big caveat is the fact that you could have a watch that ticks all of these boxes and it could still be fake. Equally, you could have a watch that doesn't quite line up with one of these things and it could be absolutely fine. So it, it is a tricky way, and a way to get around all of that trickiness is to buy a new watch from a Rolex authorized dealer, or to buy a watch from a reputable dealer, like the guys over at Chronex. 
Chronex have the largest group of in-house watchmakers who authenticate every single watch that they sell. So without doubt, what you're buying is 100% legit. Chronex have also given me a discount code to give to you, and that's Bark and Jack, all in capitals. Use that when you check out, and depending on how much you spend, you could save between 75 and 750 pounds. You get money off of that code, and it helps the channel out as well, so it's just a win-win situation. And you don't have to buy a Rolex. It can be on any watch at all, although I guess if you're watching this video, you're, kind of, you're probably looking for a Rolex, aren't you? Whenever I do a video on this fake watch, I always get comments of people saying, Adrian, can I buy that watch if you can have it? Um, the answer is no, I don't want this going into the public domain. Um, in fact, what you could do is um, I've got one of these and I'm going to get a thingy that's going to do that. Um, so if you're interested in that or you like this video, hit subscribe down there and a the little bell icon so you get notifications when I drop new videos and drop a watch. If you like this video, then hit that thumbs up button. If you like reading watch articles or want to check out our straps, jump over to barkandjack.com. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at barkandjack. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.